chief executive of Masks for Alt CA. So he will help do it alongside me. Yeah, so um, I guess we can explain, this is kind of our, how our, we make our masks. Um, I ran around and I tried to find some uh, pre-cut materials, but I uh, couldn't find any right now, but this is kind of what our masks look like. You, we use, we start with um, two pieces of 100% cotton fabric, like we have this bandana material, for example, and we get two of those pieces and the measurement should be nine by six, nine inches um, by six inches. Um, and then we, would it be easier if I share a video with you guys instead of me um, talking about it? Yes, okay. Um, let me pull up a video because um, it seems a little, it's a little bit easier to watch instead of kind of listen to how we make our masks. So, right. so Dahlia is going to share the screen of the tutorial on our website. We're Start it and run by you. Watch it once, and then I can show you in person how to do it again. Okay, share my screen. Oh, guys, I just got a confirmation. The workshops are 25 minutes. We got cut short because of the database demo. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Siobhan. Um, so this is their website, as you can see. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, this is our website, and then if you go to initiatives and then tutorials, you can see our tutorials, and we have two videos on the basics of your sewing machine, and we have our main video on how we make masks, so I'll share that one right now. Producing and distributing hand. Hello, everyone. I hope you and your loved ones are doing well in this time of quarantine. And welcome to our how to series. My name is Michelle Song. I'm the co founder of Masks for All CA, a charity project started and run by youth, producing and distributing handmade masks to the public and nonprofit organizations and professional groups in California. Today, I will be using a sewing machine generously provided by our donor, Singer Corporation. You can find all of our updates and current initiatives at our website at the top. This is our hashtag in the middle, and all of our social medias can be found at Masks for All CA. Today, I will be showing you how to produce a very basic mask. This is a tutorial for beginners. To start off, these are the materials that you will be needing. First will be two fabric pieces, each measuring roughly six inches by nine inches. As you can see, we've already pre-cut these fabrics. It may be easier if you have them pre-cut as well. The reason we use two very distinct colored fabrics is to ensure that we know which side we are using for each mask. So you can choose one of these pieces to be the inside piece of your mask and the outside piece of your mask. Next, you will need two elastic pieces to be used for the fabrics. Each one will go around your ear. They measure roughly six and a half inches. These are the materials you will be needing. Two fabric pieces, two elastics, a pair of scissors, and your sewing machine. Our masks are made of two layers, both of 100% cotton fabric. Make sure that whatever pattern you want to be facing outwards will be flipped inwards when stacking your two layers together because later we will be flipping the masks inside out so whatever is inside will then be facing outside. Make sure that you have both of your fabric pieces appropriately lined up and then we will begin sewing. Place the very long edge of the fabric facing yourself and then put the corner of the fabric piece at the needle. You're going to put the presser foot down and we can begin sewing. I have now fed the elastic to be inside of the two pieces and I will put it down. And then I will turn the mask facing towards you, put the presser foot down and I will begin to sew this way. Stop about a centimeter away from the very edge of the piece and then grab the other piece of loose elastic. Similar to the other side, you're going to want to lift the presser foot and then put the elastic in front of the needle so that it can be sewn down. You will then lift the presser foot, turn the fabric long way facing towards you, Lower the presser foot. 
and then begin sewing long ways towards you. Now that we're on to the other side of the mask, we will be putting in our second piece of elastic. You put the elastic in end first into the pocket that you have formed and still holding the end. You're going to lift the presser foot, then turn the mask towards you, set the presser foot down, and then sew towards you to ensure that this elastic is also sewed onto the mask. And begin to sew towards yourself, stopping halfway to ensure that we have enough space to flip the mask inside out. Once you've sewn halfway, you will lift the presser foot up, make any adjustments needed with your needle, take the mask out, cut that thread. Now we will be grabbing the other end of the elastic. You can still see it through the two pieces. You will go through the hole that is still there and grab the other end of elastic. Now that we have the end of the elastic, we're going to put some of it back in. We will only leave a little bit of it out when we sew back towards us, while still leaving that gap to make sure we have enough space to turn the mask inside out. Stop about an inch in between the other seams so that you have enough pocket space to be able to flip the mask inside out. Um, I just want to clarify again for this roll too. Um, instead of you're going to see you cannot the ends, you can also backstitch as an additional like um, security to make sure that the thread doesn't come out. Pull the mask out of the sewing machine, cut the thread that it was attached to, and then begin tying all of your loose threads. And you'll note that we still have this pocket over here that we left earlier from the seams. From this pocket, we will begin flipping the mask inside out by feeding our thumbs through the fabric. If done successfully, this is what your mask should look like. Now we will begin making the pleats of our mask for a more comfortable fit. The way I like to do it is I will make two folds on the mask and then I will sew it down with the pleats running with the grain of the machine. So with the folds facing you. By doing this, we not only hold down the pleats, but we also close the hole that we originally made. Take it out, cut the seam. I will now repeat the same process on the other side. When you have your finished mask, sure to cut and tie the ends. I will now show you an example of how to tie and cut these. With the two remaining threads that are left, you're going to do a simple knot. And then for extra security, you're going to do a double knot. Or you can also backstitch. After double knotting, you'll grab your scissors and cut very close to the seam. And there you have it, our completed mask. Awesome. So um, that is our mask tutorial. Um, I'll get into if there's any questions about that, but I saw something in the chat about what if I don't have a sewing machine. The same um, pattern and the same system can be used with hand sewing. Um, instead of obviously just going through the sewing machine, you would hand sew just a straight stitch. Um, we find that sewing with the sewing machine um, makes the mask last longer, but again, like either way works um, great. Yeah. Um, and to tack on another part of that, there is um, a question of inclusivity. Absolutely, we want to be inclusive of all economic backgrounds. We are very fortunate to be sponsored by Singer Corporation, so we can potentially provide a sewing machine for our volunteers. So it's been noted that the workshop time has been increased to 3.40, so that leaves us with 20 minutes. I could finish a live demonstration in 10 minutes and leave the last 10 for questions about mask sewing, or we can designate the entire 20 minutes for questions about mask sewing, because I realize it might be a bit redundant to see the video and see me do it again, so I want to get a feel, what do you all want to see?
Okay, thumbs up for option one, clapping for option two. <laughs> so option one would be 10 minute, 10 minutes. So 10 minute live demonstration, 10 minute questions. And option two is just all 20 minutes questions in case you think seeing it twice is redundant. Awesome, so it looks like we're getting a good amount of thumbs up. So if you wanna explain, um, you know, without the video, just in person, how you make it. For sure, okay. I'm very, very excited. This is my first time doing this live. My parents don't really care enough to watch me. So we're going to have our six by nine inch first fabric piece, six by nine inch second fabric piece. It's very important that these two are different colors. So you know which way is the inside and the outside of the mask. And then we have a 6.5 inch elastic piece and you can definitely make it longer or shorter based on your face. 6.5 inch last piece. And Dolly is correct, as per CDC recommendations, we recommend 100% cotton fabric. So what we're going to do is because we end up flipping the mask inside out, we're going to put the patterns facing each other. So we will sew seeing the non-pattern side. As we begin to sew, make sure everything is on, all is in operation, and just to check in, is every, can everyone see well? Okay, perfect. So you're going to put it down, and this is the long side first. You're just going to sew directly towards yourself the entire long side. Let me just get the press a little closer. Yeah. You're going to sew the entire long side first. When you get about a centimeter away from the end, that's when you take your first elastic piece. When you get about a centimeter away from the end, that's when you're gonna take your first elastic piece, open the presser foot, and put it in. Because we have to sew the elastics inside of the masks so that when we flip them inside out, they appear on the outside. So put the presser foot back down, and then sew that down. Then you're going to lift the presser foot, turn it towards you so that the short side of the fabric is facing towards you and you're going to sew towards the end again, stopping one centimeter before you reach the end. Once you stop, you're going to lift again, open, take the other side of the elastic, and you're going to sew that down as well. In doing so, we make sure that both pieces of the elastic are fastened to the fabric. Very important, because when you wear a mask, you want to make sure it's fastened. Sew it down, lift the presser foot, turn, you're going to begin sewing long ways towards you. So if you notice, if we quickly check in, inside of the mask, the elastic is sewn down. The pieces are fastened to the corners. So now we sew towards the other side. Stop a centimeter away, take your second piece of elastic, and we're going to repeat the same process. Take one end of the elastic, put it through the pocket, because now all three sides are sewn down. Take the end of the elastic, lift the presser foot. Same as always, we're going to sew it down. And then switch directions. This time you only sew halfway towards the end because we need to leave space for the pocket. So I've sewn halfway. I lift, take my needle out. I will actually pull it out and put it off here. I will then begin sewing from the other side because we want to make sure we leave a pocket that's roughly one inch long to make it easier for us to flip the mask inside out. So from the inside, I'll grab the elastic, the remaining other end, put it at the corner, and we're going to sew it down like we did for all of the other corners. So press the foot down, begin sewing. <laughs> That one's very cool. Oh, no. One moment, sorry, I need to re-thread this part. It came loose while I was demonstrating. But yes, as Dahlia mentioned previously, as I've mentioned previously, we have a partnership with Singer Corporation. They have been extremely generous and we can donate sewing machines to sewing volunteers who may have expertise in sewing, but they don't have the means or they just don't currently own a sewing machine. We are inclusive of everyone and we appreciate everyone because of their talent, not what they have.
So if you ever want to volunteer with us, you can submit a form at masksforallca.org slash volunteer form, and Dahlia can include that link in the chat again. So like I said, we're going to go through the pocket, get the elastic, put it at the corner, and we're going to sew it down, stopping an inch away from the end of the last seam. Once that's done, we lift it, come out, cut the string, and then you'll notice, same thing in the video, there is this one inch hole, this pocket. So although Dahlia gives me hate for this, I prefer to knot the ends of all of my loose seams instead of back stitching because I don't know how to back stitch. So I will go in, tie a knot for all of the strings that are still there. If you do it the way I do it, you should only have to tie three knots total. And um, to back stitch, in case you are going to use a sewing machine to do that, there is a little button right under the Singer logo that's kind of like a lever. When you're pressing down on the foot, you press down on that lever and it starts going backwards. Mm -hmm. And the gr other great thing about our volunteer network is we really, really are a family. We have several staff members who can personally call you to make sure you understand how to use the machine, or if you have any other technical issues, they can help you. So now that we have all the knots sewn down, we're going to begin flipping the mask inside out. You're going to want to feed your thumbs through the hole. It's initially very, very hard because, you know, it's such a small space and your thumbs are so big, it's for so much fabric. But once you get a momentum going, the fabric will start feeding through almost like magic, really. So once you see you already have some of it fed through, you, will, you can just take it and begin peeling it from there. Do you see that beautiful pattern emerging? These are two of my personal favorite fabrics that we ordered. One is a honeycomb design, the other is a sakura blossom design. I love them. Oh, and occasionally we'll have our volunteers vote on what fabrics to get, so I guess that's a plus. Yeah, so, one thing I also like to do is, um, you know, buy fun colored fabrics to kind of bring um, a lighter um, mood to the situation that's going on right now. Absolutely. That's a top. It's not really why we get fun. It's part of the reason we get fun fabrics, yeah. Definitely. Um, it personally just makes me a little happier when I see people with these fun patterns as opposed to everyone wearing, you know, like the white single use ones. Oh, and another benefit of using our handmade masks is they are reusable and they're more environmentally friendly than just purchasing a new single use one for every day use. So now we're moving on to the pleats. So I'm gonna have you guys vote. Do you want the honeycombs to be on the outside or the cherry blossoms to be on the outside? Thumbs up for honeycomb, clapping for cherry. So Dahlia, what's it looking like? Um, I think we're gonna do a honeycomb. Yeah. All right, we're gonna do the honeycombs. So if we do the honeycombs, we're going to begin the folding process. I personally like to do two pleats. If you want a more contoured fit, you can do four. So that means I create two folds so that it looks like this. So let me show that again. I took my finger, I just made a fold. I do it again, I just make a fold. So then similar to the video, actually exactly the same as the video, I will put my presser foot down with the folds facing me and we will sew the pleats down but also sew the whole closed at the same time. Oh, I never so okay, I'm so sorry guys, I never threaded the top needle. <laughs> so like I said, if there are ever technical issues with your machine, one of our members can help you. I'm kind of a klutz when it comes to sewing, but I really enjoy doing it. So we will always have a support network for you if you choose to volunteer with us, or you know, even if you're choosing to sew them for yourself, for your family, just shoot us an email if you ever need help. You can email us at info at masksforallca.org. We would love to hear from you guys. So, repeating that same, oh no, I did sew it down. I'm sorry guys, I did sew it down. I'm a fool. Okay, we're moving on to the other side. You're going to repeat the same pattern. You see how there's already sort of lines formed? You will take your finger, sort of follow those lines so that when you pull, look how easily the pleat is created. It sort of just follows the line of the pleat. That's the goal, that's what you want. So, same thing as in the video. I create the pleats on the other side. 
You'll note there are three folds on the other side. I'm going to run it through the machine again. Fold facing me, press your foot down. Cut it out of the machine. And then, you know, you're going to tie the loose threads. But overall, that is your mask. It has the pleats. Very, very good. So we've created a ton of designs in the past. Um, one of my favorites is actually this unicorn one we made for children. We also create children's sizes. That's very cool, but you just watched us create a mask together. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so I got a couple of questions that um, we can answer. And again, feel free to add in the chat if you want more clarification or just really anything. Um, one of the questions is, how does delivery work after volunteers make the masks or cut the masks? Um, so I personally run the volunteer program and um, the system how we do it right now because especially in San Francisco with shelter in place we have um, delivery volunteers who usually have cars but occasionally we got interest in people who are you know skateboarding or biking um, and these people we give them a bag of materials um, whether that's pre-cut already for sewing volunteers or uncut for the cutting volunteers to cut and we deliver it to your doorstep. Um, so you don't even have to leave your house to help us unless you're a delivery volunteer, of course, but we deliver it to your doorstep and then we give instructions on how to sanitize those materials and also how to create your mask um, if you are a sewing volunteer. And we give you around three to four days to do roughly 10 to 20 masks. Um, and, you know, the, the more you do it, the faster it gets. Um, I can confidently say I can make a mask within like seven minutes. Um, and it really differs per person. So it's not that much of a time commitment, um, which is really interesting. Um, I hope that answers your question, Emily. Um, yeah, and then also got a question on like how we got interested in starting this mask project. Um, so I guess for me, I am a student at the Youth Art Exchange, um, which is a nonprofit that provides free art classes to San Francisco public high school students. Um, and I take fashion and design there. And so I really wanted to use my um, sewing skills that I learned there and my interest in fashion to kind of contribute back to the community by um, making masks. So I kind of started this small GoFundMe and then Michelle reached out to me. We were, you know, prior to this, we were actually roommates on a study abroad program in Russia. Um, so I knew, I knew Michelle pretty well. And she reached out to me and she was really interested in doing the same thing. And then, you know, from there we um, jumped into getting a website and, you know, just completely expanded within the, um, I believe, three months that we've been live. Two months, yeah. Um, so we started as just like a small San Francisco thing with this small like $300 GoFundMe to now um, having chapters in New York. New Jersey, um, LA, and also opening up chapters, uh, sorry, New Mexico as well, and opening up chapters um, hopefully soon in new states to, you know, contribute to this effort um, as soon as possible. For me personally, and I think a lot of you can relate, I have Chinese parents, they're immigrants from China, they moved to America 20 years ago. When COVID-19 became a hot topic in China, they were already on it before the American media really posed it as an issue. So I had always wanted to make handmade masks because even though I'm not on the Youth Art Exchange, I've always loved a passion and crafts. But I've always thought to myself, how can I expand this to help my community? So I saw Dahlia posted a GoFundMe because she wanted to do that. I reached out to her. The rest is history. Um, and also, you know, with, with um, how well we've been doing recently, we also want to announce that, you know, on Sunday we will be um, hitting a milestone, which will be 3,000 masks distributed um, within, like, through the nation, um, majority of it being in San Francisco, of course, um, but, yeah, it's, it's pretty big, because just last week, I think, we hit 2,000, and, and then three days before that, we hit 1,000, so get this, after a month and a half, we donated 1,000, one week later, we donated 2,000, Three days after that, we donated 3,000. Oh, and on that note, for our volunteers, they truly are our family. We consider them a part of the MFACA family. We value them a lot. So we've been giving stipends to volunteers that have had tumultuous times financially for their families during the pandemic. So I guess if that interests you to volunteer as well. 
Yeah, and we're also um, looking into providing, um, of course, gifts of um, appreciation because, you know, for our organization, volunteers really are the backbone. Like, we don't run anything. Our volunteers do most of the work, and we also contribute to the sewing as well. So, um, you know, joining our volunteer network, you're able to reach out to other people who are interested in this cause, but also, you know, actually feel like you're um, contributing to the community while having your own community with us. Oh, on that note, um, if you can't necessarily volunteer to make masks, you can also help us with our promotion. Our very own Siobhan, who's also on the Team Tech board, Team Tech SF board, is our MFA, MFA CA community relations person. So she's really on the ground connecting us with local community organizations, really big on promotions. If you ever want to potentially help in that aspect, you can ask Siobhan how you can assist her. <laughs> so, 3.40, I believe this ended. We have six minutes. Are there any questions in regards to how to make a mask? Feel free to ask questions about how Team Tech SF, I mean, not Team Tech SF, Masks for All got started. Um, yeah, you can always unmute or privately message me and I can ask the questions. But we appreciate you all being here a lot. We were extremely honored to be invited to speak at this event. Um, I guess another thing um, that we uh, haven't mentioned as well is that um, with our work um, in San Francisco, we also applied for two youth-led grants that we were awarded. So um, we're going to be getting a significant amount of money um, to contribute um, to our efforts. and. Um, I guess something that we forgot to mention as well is that we run completely off of donations. We ship masks for free. We give them to the public for free, um, sanitize in Ziploc bags with notes and everything. And so this wouldn't be possible without any of our donations. So we also truly thank our donors. Um, and if you want to contribute to that, you can check it out on our website. Um, um, seeing as there are no questions just yet, I will walk you guys through our website because there's some really cool things that I want you all to see. Okay, can you guys all see it? So this is our Masks for All CA page. I'm actually gonna have to update that 2000 to 3000, but if you ever want to see our updates and what we're doing, if you hover over initiatives, we're constantly posting what we're doing. We, I'd say we upload two to three times every single week. We pride ourselves on our community values and to us community means transparency. So you can see everything we do on our website. If you also go to our chapters, you can see what they're doing as well um, about our history, what we do, meet the team, get involved, our gallery. So if you ever want to glance through, maybe you want to give us a shout out and you need a photo, you can see everything that we've been doing through our gallery. Oh, and these are all the sewing machines Singer gave us. Still, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm so proud of them. I love them so much. I do not buy from Brother anymore. I am loyal to Singer. <laughs> um, you can also see our sponsors. This is actually constantly growing. We have a lot of really, really kind organizations and companies that want to work with us. And I think that's amazing. If you contact us, there are five things you can do. You can request masks if you're an organization or group. Volunteer with us. This is the form you want to fill out if you're interested in volunteering. Media for media, general inquiries. And this is a new one that Dolly put. It's our feedback form. So Dolly, you want to introduce it? Yeah, so basically if you have received a mask for us, uh, from us, whether that be an organization or individually, or you are not volunteer with us, we really truly value our feedback because, um, you know, as you know, Michelle and I are both still high schoolers. We just finished junior year. We've never done something like this before, let alone like make a website, um, you know, run this charity organization now considered a nonprofit. So if, if we're doing something wrong or you love what we're doing, we really like to le hear and read about it. So yeah, give us, so, some, give us some feedback. Like Presentation. Check other because you guys came to this event today and really just say what you like what we're doing what you think can be improved upon we really do appreciate it um i guess we'll scroll through the home page this is the culmination of just two months of work that's why we're so proud of it as well 
because everything has always been about helping the community and just helping now the United States as a whole. So if any of you are interested in volunteering and really being a part of that change, we would greatly appreciate it. Oh, and you can also check out our Instagram. Um, this is just nine of the posts that are on our Instagram, but our Instagram is masks for all CA. We also have a Facebook and a Twitter, I believe under the same names. We have a newsletter. We have not yet fully utilized that function, but you can put in your email if you would like. Oh, tutorials, like I said, we're going to update that with a hand sew tutorial in case you want to try to do it at home and you don't have a sewing machine. And I believe that is everything. Our time is coming to a close. Um, yeah, and to add on, um, I think I just missed, oh, please wrap up. Okay, well, um, that's the end of our presentation. Um, if you uh, have any question, more questions about us, although I feel like we really went through it today <laughs> with all the time that we had, you can um, send us an email at info at masks for all CA, um, or you can fill out any of the forms on our website, um, feedback form, contact form, um, volunteer form if you want to volunteer with us, and um, donate if you want to contribute to making to ma uh, masks but you can't you know, physically make them. And yeah, we hope that you guys stay safe and healthy. <laughs> Great. Thank you very, very much for coming, guys. I know you chose to come to this workshop out of all of them. So we appreciate your time. Hope we did you proud. We're probably going to be extrapolated back into the main group eventually. So till then. Um, yeah, so here it is. Um, bye, guys. Thank you.